Hey, St. Luke, St. Luke family, our friends, our well wishes. This is Pastor Johnson. It's word and worship time on this beautiful, beautiful day, this beautiful Wednesday evening where the temperature is really, really nice. Uh, we want to um, just, we're going to look into First Peter today. I was talking to someone recently and they were talking about the difficulties uh, that lay ahead and now presented themselves as it relates to not just being a Christian, but identifying Christianity, um, not just being and living the Word of God as, as taught by Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, but but this this difficulty of identifying uh, who Christians are. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to read a passage, and, and we're going to be gone, but word and worship and prayer is very, very important. And I don't know about you, but... In the day in which we live, those of us who uh, have been rooted in our faith and realize that God is real, well, we know everything about God. And I said this, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, we cannot sit on uh, where we come to as though it's some kind of seat of, of, of badge of honor. Uh, there's some more God even for us. There are no platform says you fulfill your knowledge of God. And I learned at a very young age that applying what I know, executing what I know, opens room for more. So, so as we learn and live, God leads us to more God. As we learn to live what we've learned. And we learn to live see we learn to live it and as we live it we learn we live god leads us to more god he unveils himself to us a little bit more we have to get to a place where we realize that we are not the subject but god is the subject and he's um, revealing himself to those who learn to live according to the word as they understand it then why should I teach you more or um, reveal myself to you more when you can't even uh, love uh, like like he has instructed you to do the basic stuff? You can't even be honest. You can't even treat people right. You can't even show kindness and be humble uh, with, with the ones immediate around you. You can't live uh, that way, but you want to learn more God. So... Let's talk a little bit about that, I think, uh, this evening on our word. But in our worship experience, we must learn to worship. We must learn to uh, give God the glory, the honor, and praise, and tell God his worth to uh, you, a great God. I mean, and, and I don't know what your testimony is, but I, as I look and see where God has bought me from up to this present date, there, there was no math that says that I should be where I am. And I realized if it had not been God on my side, so I, I don't mind telling God, God, Father, I, sh I sure do thank you. I mean, it wasn't even in my mind, but I'm witness that he would do exceedingly and abundantly more than you even ask if you will learn to live and allow him to lead you to more God. Amen. And that's all done through study of the word and an understanding that the word of God is in, is, is, is in, 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 intermingled with culture. It's riding on the culture of various times. Amen. So often we get so caught up on the cultural construct that we miss the, miss the principle and the point that God wants us to learn, which is his word. It's good for all time. Amen. Amen. And then. And worship should precede our petitions anyway. And we're going to worship God and we're going to petition. Even if we just said the Lord's Prayer together, the Lord's Prayer, the first thing it does is worship God by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name. Thank you, God. The first thing we do is worship. Thy kingdom come. Let him understand and know that we realize that the world is healed. And, and and not ours. That nothing is owed to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Amen. 
as is in heaven. The first part of prayer should be worship. And sometimes things are happening to us so, so heavy and so hurting. We, we run to petition without taking a little time to say, God, I love you. I love you, God, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. I praise you. I lift you up, God. I magnify. Hallelujah. I magnify your name. That's why my heart with pain and suffering and grief, but my still my heart is filled with praise. Amen. We thank we thank God though. God, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor, Father. As we gather here now in this awesome hour, in this minute, Father. We, we pray, oh God, that your name be glorified in Jesus, that, Father, we pray that your will be done. Ha, ha, let it be done in us. Your will be done on earth as it in, is in heaven. Give us those things we need to glorify you, oh God. Position us where our very living will be a light to others and exemplify who you are. A great, a great, great father, a father who's not a deadbeat father. God, help us to resemble you, you, you're a king, and we, we are your children. Father, we, we ask that you forgive us that our shortcomings and our sins as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one, for the you are the kingdom, the power, and all glory is yours, God. As we come together in this hour, we just say thank you for goodness and mercy that we did not earn, that we do not deserve. God, we pray whatever we are, whatever whatever situation we're in, that we find the faith to understand your grace and be able to reflect your goodness to others, regardless of the situation that we're in. God, we hope that we will reach deep in our faith and remember the grace and reflect you even in turbulent situations. Thank you, God. Teach us how to make bitter, or let it make us better. God, we pray for our seniors. We pray for those who are rocked and reeling because of the loss of loved ones and the change of family dynamics can be confusing, God, can be stressful. I pray that you lay your hand of help upon them. We thank you for this church that reaches um, out, opens its arm to embrace and help people who have that to deal with. God, we pray for our young people who are back in school, our teachers. Uh, we pray for all those who work there. God, I pray you build a hedge of protection around each school, each teacher, each student in the in the name of Jesus. Hold them in the very hollow of your hand. God is only is only you can bless our elders to stay, our seniors. God, hold them, keep them. God, God you know what they stand in the need of, Father. I, I, I pray that we create mm, ministry that will minister to them in a way that uh, they they will understand that they have been honored and respected. I pray for the, the sisters this week, God, and this month, that you elevate them into this area of, of being prepared to rule over situations that try to dominate them in their interpersonal selves. We say thank you, God. We give you glory. You know who's on our sick list. God, I pray you touch each name by name right now. Enter each home in Jesus' name and bring joy there. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we thank God for you. Thank God for you tuning in. I, I want you to read the first chapter of Peter and I want to read a part of the second chapter of Peter. And we're going to talk about um, that just for a few moments. And, um, and we'll, we'll be out of here. And, and Peter, of course, Peter is that, that apostle, that disciple, that, that person who um, was with Jesus in the inner circle with Jesus. Peter is the one who cut off Malcolm's ear. Peter is the one who um, denied Jesus, that he knew Jesus. He followed Jesus afar off. He's a lesson. Peter is a lesson uh, in work. He's this, this, this person who many of us would not have chose to, to be a, a disciple, but Jesus chose him. He's a, he's a lesson. He's a former fisherman, 
and it has a brother named Andrew as we read the gospel and um, Peter was the one who God revealed to him um, that Jesus was the Messiah, he was the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus in turn tells Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed that, but the Holy Spirit revealed that. And upon the, this rock, and this rock I believe is upon the revelation of Jesus to his father, servants, to his follows upon that revelation that's a strong it's a rock god speaks to us often through his word it doesn't go against his word and that counter to it word it doesn't confuse his word but god reveals uh, what the word means what the word word is saying god reveals that to his his servant who uh, who jesus is and for peter he says thou art the christ the messiah the one to come, to be the savior of the world. Um, in Peter's life, this book is being written to those who are struggling because of persecution uh, of those who, who believe. And the struggle for the church is not um, as visible as it shall be struggle for you as a Christian uh, you know about it because the world wants you uh, to numb down to be silent uh, to go along and to get along it wants you uh, not to stand where you the Bible has taught you to stand where the word of God has taught you to stand on issues of now it wants you to uh, go along and, and, and be quiet and you know deal with it and, and not live your truth and not speak the truth amen everyone else can speak whatever they want to speak but you can't speak the truth and and the thing about us and and i speaking of the truth and jesus spoke the truth jesus was the truth the difference is jesus did all that in love he, he taught in love and and that may be a difference for us we get angry with people who are different from us or people who do things that we say is against God well it's time for us to let God be his own police and we keep practicing and what I mean by that we keep practicing the ways of God that is living the truth telling the truth and teaching the truth and and, and 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 we do it in love you you, you Jesus had all kinds of sinners to draw to him. He didn't lie. He didn't condone what they did. He didn't do any of that. None of it. What he seems to do in the gospel is help us realize that we're all in the same boat. And what the gospel has is a group of religious hierarchy trying to look down on others who they say they were in sin, but all was in sin. We cannot help people acting as if we're so much higher than they are better than they are we are all struggling in this world and we're all struggling in this flesh for the spirit wrestles with the flesh and i can share with you that the flesh don't win if it did not win every round amen amen right there but in first peter so he's writing to uh, encourage some who um, um are being discouraged by suffering and it's by suffering by living right in a world that's gone in a hay basket yeah hand basket it, living among people who uh, claim god but don't live godly um yeah yeah so i'm, I'm gonna read this verse in the second chapter of first peter second chapter of first peter he's a possible jesus christ and the second chapter of first peter says uh um which you got to read the first to get it all wherefore laying aside all malice all and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking 
as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming also unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also are lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Ye are also, as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. I, I want to, if I had to put a tag on this, and there's so much in this, but what Paul is doing is showing us um, some things we have to um, uh, overcome um, in our persons, in our in our persons, and some things we have to do in order to grow. So, in order to grow, in order to grow, you've confessed Christ. You believe that Jesus is real. You may have been baptized. You may have been in church in a long time. A long time. You may be on different ministries. You may be wherever in the church. You may be called these fancy labels, bishop, apostle, uh, whatever the labels are. You may be all of that. But Paul says, because you're saved, lay aside all malice. Don't do things with malice in your heart. Intent to harm others, mad at others, mean toward others. Making it hard for others, malice in your heart. Uh, you got to be laid aside. And then he says, "Gal, that's being trickery and and, and 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 hypocrisy. That's acting like one thing, but you really are another." Amen. Hypocrisy means you're just acting. You're just acting. Envious means that you have a problem with someone else has something or are something that that it, you, 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 you to envy means that I sort of want you to have what you have and or I don't want you to have it <laughs> yeah yeah and all evil speaking all evil speaking this that's in verse one of this this few verses that I read to you because we are saved Paul says lay aside and when Paul, Peter, Peter says, lay aside. When Peter says this, he says, it's an effort you have to have to stop doing something. That thing is not bigger than the Holy Ghost in you unless you let it be. So so don't keep telling uh, the world that I'm just trying, child, I'm trying. No, no. He said, lay it. Lay aside all malice. And God, you got to identify it and lay it aside. Hypocrisy. Stop acting like you're one thing in front of some folk and one thing in front of others. Uh, like a schizophrenic Christian. Envies. Stop being upset with people who are doing well and perhaps better than you are. Have things that you may not have. Stop envying for, for the gifts that God has given others. Don't, don't, don't do that. That don't don't envy people for where God has placed them on the platform for ministry. Don't envy don't don't envy them. You don't you don't know what kind of hell they had to go to to get them where they are. You don't know what they've had to endure, the fire they had to be tried in, in order to stand on that platform. Everyone came. Take the same fire and testing and the same um, building techniques that God uses. Because a lot of times God has to tear most of us down and break some stuff off us. You know, some of us are like, they, we had some 
Um, we had wall, black walnuts, we had pecans, we had different levels of pecan, we had the soft shell all the way to those that was really hard to crack, but there was something out in the, in the wild that we didn't bother too often, it's called a hickory nut. And the shell was thicker than the meat inside was delicious, but the shell was so thick you had to take hammers and try to break that thing. It was just you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't you you couldn't just you couldn't put that in your mouth and crack it. You couldn't do that. You had to have the hammer. Sometimes God has had to hammer someone to get what good was out of them. You you might not be able to take that hammer. Anyway, don't be envying. And, and envious people are the people who speak evil of others. Yeah, sometimes people whisper that evil stuff about someone else because they envy them. Mm -hmm. Not always, but sometimes it's just because they they envy them. And be careful, my brothers. Be careful, my sisters. Because people can pick up on on that. You're trying to tear someone else down because you're envious of them. You don't want them on your same little platform kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about. You've heard it. You've seen it done. You've heard it done. You know, someone, um, a choir, um, some kind of um, uh, achievement, whether it's a degree, um, whatever, a, a position, and someone pull up and you know you you know you know how they got that, don't you? No, I don't know, but I'm I thank God that they have it. So sometimes people want uh, to tear they become haters and speak evil because they're envious, envious of the others. And then he says something that is so paramount to those of us, all of us. People will look at this next verse and think it's not for them because he says, as, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. This thing is powerful right here because a lot of us want to get deep with the Lord. We want to we want to be deep in the word. We want to, we want to be deep. I listen to deep people all the time. Most deep people I hear, you can't apply their deepness to everyday and normal life. You don't grow, you, you may be mesmerized by the way they string terminologies together and make it sound, sometimes making it rhyme 6.6 6 C's or 7.7 7 T's, you know, and it just comes out, comes out, comes out. Good, 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 great. But how can that, all of that help you uh, deal with your day-to-day -day struggle with the Christian life? Paul says this. Desire the sincere milk, the easy things of the word. Continue to study the, those gospels and those lessons of Jesus Christ. The sincere milk, the Proverbs, the sincere milk of the word. And then he says something that will be helpful, and that is you'll grow by learning. The, the, see, 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 milk is what babies drink. But there are too many people who get born again, and they're born grown. They were grown before they got born again, they say, or join. And, and then when they join, they're still grown. They don't consider themselves. But when you're born again, you are a babe in Christ, and you need the milk of the word. And a lot of people was in church a long time before they got born. Some people in church right now, baptized, whole nine yards, still haven't gotten born. Still not living a spirit, born of spirit, mean change of personality. The Holy Spirit through the word of God has been in you, in you, burst on, start growing and transplanted the Holy Spirit personality. When you're being, your whole personality is being changed. You know, Grandma said, that child just got a good spirit. The Holy Spirit has begun to take over the spirit of nature and change into who you were. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you. And and it needs to be fed th that nutrient of the milk, not the deep thing. There's some deep thing. You'll get to those, but you need to grow to get to those things because it will challenge your mind growing and being able to apply the little things, the loving your neighbors to 
being kind to humbling yourself, recognizing that God raises up the humble. He lifts up the humble. And a lot of people want to go up instead of being lifted up. A lot of people believe they are up based upon secular achievement. But when you're born again in this place, you need the milk of the word. There's so many people uh, like to go places where they feel like uh, Dr. So-and-so, he's at my level, I'm uh, matriculated here in theater, and I'm under Dr. So-and-such and such, he's a match for my intellectual da-da-da-da, all foolishness. Go where you can get the milk as, as a newborn babe, so you can grow in the likeness of Jesus Christ, regardless of what your stature is, in the world, the, the the likeness of Jesus, the image of Jesus Christ began to be reflected in the who you are. Amen. The kindness, the helpfulness, the sacrificial life, the way of seeing uh, the hope and possibility in, in others that you once didn't see. A, a hand to reach out to not just help, but to touch those who are untouchable to others in the world. Because we think we're so christian fire, we can't touch certain, certain things that's beneath me. He said, as newborn babes, see yourself as a newborn babe. Desire the sincere milk, the, the, that, that important nutrition. I was talking to someone some while ago was talking about where possible mothers are to breastfeed. There are cases that they said, this is a professional said, there are cases where that's not possible, but where possible, because the body of the mother have prepared the exact nutrition that that baby, thank you, Holy Ghost, Ghost need. Too, too many of uh, us are born again and we begin to eat off our TV evangelists, eat stuff, ear, stuff chewing up stuff that can choke us. But, but he said, desire the sincere milk of the word, the simple things of God that we can, we can grow uh, thereby. As a baby, that milk lasts for several years couple of years and, and and then we move them on to little something else or then we bring them on to something else and wean them from that we put them on other new nutrition but he said it, 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 as newborn babes if you haven't gone through this phase you haven't grown desire the sincere milk of the word of God not the entertainment of the pulpit not the entertainment of the uh Sometimes the worship experience is, is, is just entertainment. But in order to grow, you have to have, we have to desire, want the milk of the word that we may grow thereby. And so be you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. That means that the grace of God has allowed you to know that he has accepted you Re yeah god god has accepted you if you believe that jesus christ died for your sins and you recognize that i was a i was lost in sin and, but, but grace not something i did but but he loved me yet while i was a sinner he's accepted me and I want to glorify him because of that acceptance. That means I desire the milk that, that I can grow. Growing into uh, to godliness and growing out of my formal behavior. You're a lively stone. Build up a spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And here's the test. This, understand that our daily activity and activities without our mouth saying anything necessarily 
should testify to godliness. Should give evidence of godliness. Spiritual sacrifices different from the Old Testament animal sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifices of our lips and of our ways, doing things God's way, led by the Holy Spirit, guided by the Word. The Holy Spirit grows on the Word. When we uh, desire the sincere milk of the Word and we grow thereby, the Holy Spirit grows in us as well. And we become, um, we offer up spiritual sacrifices of our ways and our attitudes and our behavior. And it's a sacrifice because so often flesh don't want us to do it. But it's a sacrifice to the living God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's acceptable to, to, to God by Jesus Christ that we offer up spiritual sacrifices through our speaking to those who won't speak to us, to our loving those who hate us, to us doing good to those who won't return that favor, to us not retaliating on folk for their enviousness and for their evil speaking of us to where we are able to love for those are spiritual sacrifices. You're doing it because the Holy Spirit leads you to do it, not because your flesh wants to do it. That reflects that's the mirror of God. And people who sit on the sideline and see us conducting ourselves that way understand that we serve a mighty God and believe then, believe more and glorify the God that we serve. But when we act otherwise, they'd be going, oh, I, I thought that was who that, 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 do they go to, which, what, what, don't they singing? Then do, don't they and that, and not a preacher? Lord, this, I, I don't want none of that. You know, so so we have to be mm, on alert at all times that our lives should be a living testimony. But but we don't do it because many of us have not grown by the milk of the word to get that solid solid foundation. Desiring a sincere milk of the word that guides us into attitude, behavior, and conduct. That's how we can go off. We can just, just go off and say crazy stuff and ugly stuff to anyone, anytime. Or we had, if we go to church, we had it and do it at the house, in our car, talk to our wives, our husbands, our children. Any kind of way or talk about anyone any kind of way, yet we sing in the choir and we're on the praise team and we in the pulpit and we're the preacher, we're the pastor, we're the apostle, we're the bishop, but we just hypocrites. And the world stands on the sideline and see what God is like in us. We have to offer up spiritual sacrifice because we dine on the milk of the word. Listen, y'all be blessed. You heard this word. If someone, you heard this word and you redo this and you, you're here with us or whatever it is. And the Lord said, you know what? In your spirit, you say, you know, I just felt the spirit of God move. I want to be one of those lively stones. Build up into that house, making that spiritual sacrifice on my job when I'm shopping, whatever I'm doing. I want to do that. But you haven't given your life to Christ. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that right now. If you want to do that, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe and accept the Lord Jesus as my dead, my buried and resurrected sage bearer. I ask Jesus to come into my heart and own me as a child, his child. If you've done that, if you did that, we welcome you to the house of faith, wherever you are in the country or in the world. We want you to find a place that you can 
be baptized into the body of Jesus Christ, raised to a new life. Amen. He is identified with you. You've identified with him, so raised to a new life. Desire to milk of the word that you can grow by the Holy Spirit to offer spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord. Amen. You be blessed.